Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today I'm gonna talk about the perfect way to sync your audio and video. So let's get into it. So in the film industry, if you're like me, one of the most annoying things in the world is having to sync either multiple cameras or multiple cameras and audio sources. Now I do this on a regular basis when it comes to things like weddings, short films, all that kind of stuff because I normally record audio separately and even use multiple cameras in certain scenarios. Now of course the original and classic way is to go in and manually sync up based on maybe a clap or if you have a clapper or something of that nature. And although that can work and it's of course accurate, it's kind of annoying and time consuming and if you don't have an assistant editor, that can really take up a lot of your time. So what a lot of NLEs have done is implemented a basically waveform based syncing software. And what that does is it takes the waveforms, compares them, and then syncs them. Now, of course, most famously, Pluralize is a video that I did in the past and has been pretty much my go-to when it comes to syncing audio. Now, although in most cases it's pretty much perfect, there's a few instances where this waveform-based syncing doesn't work. The first situation is when you have a camera that's too far away from the subject to capture any scratch audio at all. So, for instance, if I'm at a wedding and I have someone speaking very far away or I'm at a short film and it's a really wide shot and my camera audio can't pick up what the person is saying, but of course their microphone, whether it's a lav mic or whatever is recording them can, it's really hard to sync those up in post without doing it manually. One of the other issues I see most of the time in doing short films is when it comes to doing a ton of different takes. So let's say the line is, hey, how's it going? Well, the actor or actress repeats that line several times and of course they all sound very similar. So what ends up happening is most NLEs and even pluralized can't decipher the difference between those takes and it ends up syncing the wrong take or any of that kind of stuff. So in those situations, I found that the normal syncing process process between audio and video has kind of crumbled and it's kind of left me wondering what about the third option? Now I'd heard about timecode in the past, but of course it was something that was only used at the cinema level. Now if you're not familiar with timecode, timecode is basically a super accurate clock that syncs across several devices. Generally in the professional case, the cameras and audio devices actually have a timecode sync. And what you do is you take a timecode device, usually like a slate that actually has a digital timecode on it. You then jam the timecode into your other devices by plugging it into the audio recorders, the cameras. And then what that does is it it basically syncs all of their internal clocks perfectly. So later in post, when you're editing, all of it can easily be synced with a click of a button and then you can easily find everything. It's all synced together, it's easy. Of course, the problem is that time code is not easily available for lower budget productions like most of the stuff that I do and most of the people on YouTube because let's be real. I think one of the cheapest cameras with time code is actually the Ursa Mini Pro, but again, that's still a $6,000 camera. So when it comes to most cameras below that, especially in the DSLR or hybrid realm, those cameras have no audio time code and even some mid-range audio recorders like the Zoom H6 and a lot of those other popular audio recorders don't have a built-in time code or any type of time code syncing. So that kind of leaves people like us in a little bit of a jam. See what I did there? That is until I heard of the company called Tentacle Sync. So I actually reached out to Tentacle Sync after I'd heard about their devices that allow time code to work on pretty much any camera and audio device. And I said, hey guys, listen, I'd really love to check it out. And they were super kind enough to send some units out to, for me to check out. So they did not sponsor this video as always. They sent this to me to check out, to review and speak however I want. And I will give you guys all the pros and cons. So first let's kind of start with what these devices are. So basically the Tentacle Sync devices are these little tiny kind of like nine volt battery shaped boxes. And what they do is they actually output a sound that replicates timecode that can then be synced later and basically used as timecode. Also, these can actually jam real timecode. So if you do have a camera that needs some type of timecode and you have an audio device that doesn't, this can both jam the actual timecode as well as then sync across the devices. So what you need to do is if you're just jamming timecode, you can just have one of these and just jam the timecode based on it and easy, ready to go. And now the other mode, which is what we're gonna be mostly talking about today, is the fact that it's actually outputting a timecode sound. So the way you set these things up is they do charge by USB-C, which is really nice. They actually come with the USB-C chargers inside, and you do have to have one per device that you're using. So in my case, I'm just using the GH5 most of the time, and I'm just using my Zoom H6s right here. So what I do is I take my devices, I turn them on, and I set them to the green mode, which is where they're outputting the sound of timecode. Then I plug both devices into my camera and my audio recorder. 
making sure that my camera and audio recorder are recording the sounds. Now, the cool thing is the technical sync actually has a microphone. So when you're plugging it into your camera, you're not just getting the time code sound, you're actually getting a scratch audio track too, which is super helpful if you still wanna have that scratch audio. Once both devices are plugged into your camera and your audio recorder, and you ensure that they're plugged in properly and turned up where you can see that there actually is a sound, it's usually gonna be kind of a steady looking sound. Then you open up the app on your phone, you just click wireless sync, and boom, you're done. So what Tentacle Sync actually does is it generates this very weird sounding time code sound. I'll play it for you right now. Yeah, so it sounds terrible. But what it basically is doing is injecting what is pretty much time code. Now on the app on your phone or iPad or whatever device you're using, you're actually syncing those two devices together, ensuring that their clocks are properly in sync so that when they're spitting this weird time code sound into the camera and audio device, those are spitting at the exact same moments, the exact same frequencies. Now this goes for any other cameras or audio devices you could be running. You could have 15 of these things running at once, going into several different devices, and all of them are spitting that exact same time code to each other as long as you've wirelessly synced them via the app. So one of the things about these I love is they're super small, they're lightweight, they come with a little Velcro kind of attachment, and they also come with these really cool color coding changes so you can tell like, oh, this one I use for my GH5, or this one I use for my audio recorder. Not that it really matters that much, but they also do have the adapters for XLR and stuff like that, which I use for my H6, or any other kind of adapter that you might need depending on the camera you have. These things are built pretty tough. I mean, they're small, they're plastic, but they're so lightweight. I actually accidentally like basically threw one across the room and it was totally fine, worked perfectly fine. And the battery life lasts around 35 hours. And I think they charge up fairly quick via USB-C. So it's one of those situations where if you have a shoot day, I mean, unless you're shooting for like 35 hours straight, you're probably more than fine. One thing that's really cool too is a safety feature is after two hours, if they notice that nothing is plugged into them, they will actually turn off. Now the app is pretty intuitive. It's easy to download. It's super easy to get started. You can just open the app. You can add your device, name your device. You have to make sure that your frames per second per time that you sync it is on par with what you want. But otherwise the app is really easy to use. It's really easy to get into and just get things kind of going. Now in that app, you can actually change the settings for these when it comes to things like the color, the name, the sync type, the frames per second. So if you're shooting things in 60 or 30 frames and you wanna make sure that everything is synced across devices and that's something you really need to make sure you do. So, okay, great. We have a production, we shot, we have everything ready to go. We were importing our time code into our audio devices. Now what? So this is where things get fun. So Tentacle Sync actually includes a download of their pro software, which is the software that is used to actually sync up these devices later. Now, the reason why you can't use your typical NLE to sync these up is because this is not true time code because things like the GH5 and H6 don't actually have time code. So it's injecting that time code that then Tentacle Sync software is going to read. So you can't just bring this into your editor and just try to sync it up in time code in your NLE. That's not going to work. But don't worry, it's a very easy workflow. So anyway, I go in, I take all of my clips, all of my video, all of my audio, I drop them all in. And then what I do is I just click the sync map button and it instantly syncs everything. Now here's something that's really cool and I think a lot of people don't think about. One of the biggest issues with things like Pluralize or any NLE that has that waveform based software is it has to process every single piece or frame or whatever it is bit of audio in order to sync those up which needs a lot of processing power. So if you're on a laptop or a smaller machine, it's gonna be a lot harder for it to process all of that. But the advantage of time code is because it's all this mathematically based time, it's instantaneous. There's little to no processing actually having to be done because once those clocks match up, everything just jumps in line afterwards. So instead of having to find every single waveform, every bit of a video to make sure it syncs, it's just having to find the first massive line of time code per clip and make sure that they'll sync up properly. So it's a lot easier to do on things like a laptop and it's literally instantaneous. And then all you do is you simply export an XML and then you can import it into Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or any NLE that you're using. And then boom, from there you have one giant synced up timeline and that's it. And I look at this device as something that's gonna be a huge game changer when it comes to especially things like narrative short films or stuff like that, where we're doing maybe five, six takes per shot. We have a ton of different shots. Maybe some have audio, some don't have audio. And it's always one of those things of like, oh, you know, is this the right one? Or was this the audio with that? And it's always just so confusing. 
And then when, of course, if I use Pluralize and I bring them all into Pluralize, which is a great software, I'm not trashing Pluralize, but of course it takes so much longer to sync and then some things don't sync up where this is just, it's scientific. It, it works because it's, it's math, it's numbers, it's, it's right there. It's easy to sync. It's not using that processing power or sort of the guessing of waveforms. It's just, it is what it is. So it's about 500 bucks for the kit of two that I have. And I can wholeheartedly say that is totally worth the price. The great thing is too about the technical sync products is that they can grow with you. So if you do get more cameras or audio recorders, you can of course always add on more. And if you were to go on a professional shoot where then you do need to actually use real time code, you can actually jam any device from these. So let's say you're running audio and you go on set and you have a Zoom H6 and let's say someone's shooting on an Alexa Mini, you can actually go use your technical sync to jam their time code and then run your time code into your device and of course they're going to be perfectly in sync. So again, it's the fact that for such a cheap price, it can grow with you. So who is this really for? Because I think a lot of you that may have watched this video may say, well, I don't know if I want to spend $500 on a, you know, a syncing device. And I understand that. Again, I understand if you're someone who's doing very limited work where maybe you're just doing it as a hobby or it's just for YouTube or something really simple. Although I do think the technical sync makes a huge difference in that workflow. I can understand where you might say, ah, I don't know if the price tag's worth it. But for myself, even people in the prosumer market, I think should definitely take a look at this. Because again, this is just something that can simplify. Even if you're making a couple hundred dollars on a few videos here and there, again, it's just one of those things that's gonna simplify your workflow, make things so much faster and save you time in the long run. So guys, I'm gonna leave the link down in the description below for the different kits that Technical Sync has, whether it's the one kit, two kit, and they have several others. But be sure to check out those links below if you wanna get any of the stuff I've talked about today. Also, be sure to check out my kit.com below, which goes over all of the equipment that I have. Well, anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video again, and I'll catch you guys later.